Welcome to Eternal Elements Learning Podcast brought to you by Tessa Online. These podcasts are a part of the audio certificate programs on Tessa Online. You are free to take these podcasts on your desired portal also should you only wish to learn on the go. Thank you so much for engaging on these podcasts and you can connect with the author on LinkedIn, Twitter and Facebook. Welcome back. This is Nikit Kurski from Eternal Elements. Brought to you by Chess Online. We are in season eight, talking about international business. In this podcast, I wish to talk to you about the schools of thought pertaining to international business. The first school of thought, the thought that I belong to, says globalization is inevitable. Why do I think globalization is inevitable? Because we have progressed too far. We cannot go back now. There are countries which have aligned together for their own well-being, for the well-being of their people, for the well-being of their businesses. There is technology. There have been supply chains that have been determined. There are capacities in which investments have already happened and therefore globalization is inevitable. Even if there are years of distress, even if there are phenomena which are beyond the control of a human being, for a short span of time, people may become protectionist in nature. But overall, globalization is inevitable. That's my thought. Only time will tell whether this thought is correct or incorrect. The second school of thought says that more regional global growth will happen. Now, when we're talking about regional, we're actually saying that there'll be a lot of regional trade agreements that will happen. If the regional trade agreements happen and these agreements are going to be successful, then obviously the concentration is going to happen around regions. Plus, the advantage is that in regions, cultural dissimilarities are very, very less. They may be sharing boundaries and it may be very easy to design supply chains and support them. Therefore, rather than going global, regional could be a great scenario. But I have a problem with regional trade agreements. A lot of countries that share borders are actually hostile towards each other. Very few countries have actually learned to cooperate with each other when they share borders. And because of the political ideologies and because of the differences that exist and because of the expansionist attitude that a lot of nations have while they compete with their neighbors, you may actually see regional growth getting hampered, though obviously there is an immense potential in regional trade. But then regional trade will also choke up in terms of its capacities. The third school of thought is that the globalization will slow down because of protectionism. It says that ultimately globalization will collapse and nations would want to operate independently. Well, in theory, it may seem good, but then we've got to understand how many nations actually are well supported through the economic resources that they may have. I do not think there is any nation available on this planet which can say that it is able to sustain itself completely. And because we live on a planet where interdependence is the fundamental, that means everybody has to collaborate so that the planet wins. That is where I personally believe and a lot of researchers also believe and so does the World Trade Organization believe that globalization is the only way forward. Now, if globalization is inevitable, obviously global competition is inevitable. Now, global competition can happen in countries of different sizes. There can be few competitors, there can be many competitors. It all depends on the market size. The larger the market size, the more the competition. It also depends on do they have the muscle to really commit resources to a particular market. There are emerging markets and there are massive markets and everybody is eyeing those markets. 
and when everybody is eyeing those markets obviously everybody would want to enter those markets either you will enter first you will be the first mover or you may be a follower but if not today tomorrow you are bound to enter the market otherwise your capacities will get choked for sure your profits will get choked for sure your top lines will get choked for sure if you want to compete internationally that means you must build a workforce which understands the dimensions of international business each country has its specific laws each country has its specific cultures each country has its own economic parameters around which it operates and this is constantly changing this is changing because awareness of the consumer is going up and habits are changing behaviors are changing and therefore we are dealing with a market which is extremely dynamic and it is not static This is Nikit Kharasi signing off from Eternal Elements brought to you by us online we talked about the schools of thoughts of globalization in the subsequent podcast we are now moving into the environment and the dynamics of international business so that we are able to know where should we do business and where should we not do business and when we decide to do business how should we create our business models thank you very much I'll see you in the next podcast. This is Nikit Karatsky signing off.